Back in the 1980s, the Boston Celtics were one of the best teams in the league, winning three championships, the last one being in 1986. That was the year when Larry Bird won his third consecutive MVP award. No one could have predicted that the Celtics would need more than two decades before winning the next championship. It happened in 2008 when Celtics GM Danny Ainge created a super team, adding the 2004 MVP Kevin Garnett and the best shooter in the league at that time, Ray Allen, to a roster that already featured Paul Pierce. Looking back, all Celtics fans were nostalgic about their last big three, but there was actually a guy that facilitated all of them, and that was Ray John Rondo. The kid was only 21, playing in the second year in the league and running the point guard position for the team that brought back the glory days in Boston. Many have forgotten how big of a role Rondo played on that team, taking care of the ball, supplying enough passes for three superstars in their primes, and playing excellent defense. He made the all-star team with all of them in 2010, but the fact remains that Rondo does not get the credit he deserves for the championship season. And it is safe to say that he is the most underrated point guard in NBA history. In this video, we are looking back at his journey to the NBA and how he reached the peak of his career early on the Celtics, all the way to becoming the second player ever to win an NBA championship with both the Celtics and the Lakers. Rondo was born on February 22nd, 1986, in Louisville, Kentucky, to Amber Rondo and William Sr. It was one of four kids in the family. When Ray John was seven years old, his father left him and his mother took care of the family while working for a tobacco company, Philip Morris. Ray John was into sports at a very young age and football was his first choice. Given that he was a skinny kid, his mother advised him to play basketball, and it ended up being the right choice. Rondo played basketball at Louisville's Eastern High School and was constantly improving. In his junior year, Rondo averaged 27.9 points, 10 rebounds, and 7.5 assists, which earned him a spot on the All-State team and was named the seventh region player of the year. He was so serious about his basketball future at the time, he decided to transfer to Oak Hill Academy in Virginia for a senior year. There he averaged 21 points, 12 assists, and three rebounds per game, leading the school to a 38-0 record. He broke the record of 494 assists in a single year, surpassing Jeff McClinnis. The highlight of Rondo's senior year at high school was a 31 assist performance, which was only four shy of the national high school record. He didn't make a name as an elite scorer in the NBA, but at Oak Hill Academy, Rondo had a 55 point performance, which is the second highest in school history after Calvin Duncan had 61. Rondo was named to the McDonald's All-American team in 2004 and scored a total of 14 points, four assists and four rebounds in the All-Star game. He also played in the 2004 Jordan Brand Capital Classic game, logging 12 points, five assists, and four steals. Being one of the best guards in the class, Rondo had offers from most of the major colleges, including his hometown college, Louisville. But instead, he chose to go to Kentucky, which had the top-rated recruiting class for 2004, according to Rivals.com, that also featured All-Americans Joe Crawford and Randall Morris. Rondo played in 34 games in his freshman year, with the Wildcats averaging 8.1 points, 3.5 assists, 2.9 rebounds, and 2.6 steals per game. He had a couple of excellent performances, leading Kentucky to several wins against Louisville, South Carolina, and Central Florida, finishing the season on top of the SEC with a 25-5 record. They went past Eastern Michigan, Cincinnati, and Utah to make it to the Elite Eight, where they failed short to Michigan State at 94-88 in double overtime. In his sophomore year at Kentucky, Rondo averaged 11.2 points, 6.1 rebounds, 4.9 assists, and 2.1 steals per game. He had a career-high 12 assists against Ole Miss and dropped 25 points against Louisville. Rondo set a Kentucky record for most rebounds in a game by a guard with 19 rebounds in an early season loss to Iowa. Kentucky was the eighth seed in the region 
with a 21 and 12 record and lost in the second round of the NCAA tournament 87-83 to UConn. After the season, Rondo was named to the U.S. men's national under 21 basketball team, which traveled to Argentina for the 2005 FIBA Under-21 World Championship. He averaged 11 points and 4.5 assists in an eight-game tournament, garnering much attention from NBA scouts. Rondo decided it was time for the big league and declared for the 2006 NBA draft. The Phoenix Suns selected him with the 21st pick and he was the first point guard selected in the draft. The Suns immediately traded him to the Celtics along with Brian Grant for the Cleveland Cavaliers first round draft pick in the 2007 NBA draft and cast considerations. This trade looks unbelievable from this perspective, but the Suns had Steve Nash, Leonardo Barbosa, and Marcus Banks at the point guard position that year. So simply, there was no room for another one. The trade ended up being a perfect match for Rondo, who immediately got the chance to play in Boston. He was the backup point guard behind Sebastian Telefair and Delonte West. He made his first start in January and from March on became the starting point guard for the team. He scored a season high 23 points in the loss to the Clippers. He played in 78 games in his rookie season, starting 25 of them and averaging 6.4 points, 3.8 assists, and 3.7 rebounds per game, which got him a spot on the all-rookie second team. His numbers were not high, but the Celtics management recognized the leadership and basketball IQ Rondo had and decided not to include him in one of the biggest trades in NBA history. In the 2007 offseason, the Celtics traded seven players to the Minnesota Timberwolves in exchange for Kevin Garnett, but kept Rondo as he was given the chance to be the starting point guard in the lineup with three future Hall of Famers. Many considered that the Celtics needed a veteran point guard to lead the star-packed team, and they indeed signed Sam Cassell. But he was the backup point guard for Rondo. Rondo scored a career-high 24 points against the Clippers, dished out a record 16 assists against the Charlotte Bobcats, and finished the season averaging 10.6 points, 5.1 assists, and 4.2 rebounds per game. The Celtics finished the regular season with a league-best 66-16 record, and when the playoff time arrived, Rondo proved the doubters wrong on the biggest NBA scene. The Celtics survived two seven-game series against the Atlanta Hawks in the first round and the Cleveland Cavaliers in the second round before defeating the Detroit Pistons in the Eastern Conference Finals in six games. The Los Angeles Lakers were the last team standing in front of the Celtics' first NBA championship since the previously mentioned 1986 NBA championship. The Lakers had Kobe Bryant in his prime and an experienced point guard, Derek Fisher. Rondo did not back down from the challenge. Often guarding Kobe, the Celtics defeated the Lakers in six games and Rondo was the youngest player on the championship roster, averaging 9.3 points, 6.7 assists, 3.8 rebounds, and 1.5 steals per game in that final series. After the championship run, Rondo made a name for himself as one of the best point guards in the league, even though it was obvious that he was a poor shooter. The Celtics started the following season with a 19-0 run, the longest winning streak in franchise history and the best start of any team in league history. Rondo recorded his first career triple-double along with a career high in assists with 16 points, 13 rebounds, and 17 assists against the Indiana Pacers. On his 23rd birthday, Rondo dropped a career high 32 points on a team that quit on him, the Phoenix Suns. He finished the season ranking fifth in the NBA in assists with 8.2 and steals with 1.9. In the opening playoff round against the Chicago Bulls, Rondo had two triple doubles, becoming the first Celtics player with two triple doubles in a single series after, you guess who, Larry Bird in 1986. However, with Garnett being injured, the Celtics lost in seven games in the second round to the Orlando Magic. Rondo averaged nearly a triple double with 16.9 points, 9.7 rebounds, 
and 9.8 assists in the playoffs. In the following year, the 2009-2010 season, Rondo made his first All-Star appearance. Earlier that season, he signed a five-year extension with the Celtics, worth a guaranteed $55 million, and became the first NBA player to sign a deal with Red Bull. Rondo averaged highs in points, 13.7 assists, 9.8 and steals 2.3 becoming the first celtic to lead the league in steals the celtics finished second in the east with a 50 32 record in the opening round of the playoffs they defeated the miami heat in five games in the second game of the series rondo dished out 19 assists tying his career high and also tying the franchise record for most assists in a playoff game. In game four, he recorded his fourth postseason triple-double along with playoff career high, 29 points and 18 rebounds. He joined Will Chamberlain and Oscar Robinson as the only other player in NBA history to have a 29-point, 18-rebound, and 13-assist playoff game. The Celtics moved on to beat the Cleveland Cavaliers in the Magic, before losing to the Lakers in the NBA Finals. At the beginning of the 2010-2011 season, Rondo recorded a 10-point, 10-rebound, and 24-assist triple-double against the New York Knicks, becoming the second player ever to do that after Isaiah Thomas had a 24-assist triple-double. His total of 50 assists through the first three games of the season tied John Stockton's NBA record for the most assists to start a season. His popularity was sky high, and he had the third best-selling jersey that season behind only LeBron James and Kobe Bryant. However, the Celtics' dominance started to fade away as they lost to the Miami Heat in two consecutive postseasons. Rondo was the NBA assist leader in back-to-back -back seasons in 2012 and 2013, but the rest of the stars on that team were already past their prime, and the Celtics did not return to another NBA Finals while Rondo was there. In the 2012-2013 season, Rondo started with a 24-game, 10-plus assist streak, but he played only 38 games after suffering from a torn ACL. He missed almost a year with recovery and played in only 30 games the following season. Two months into the 2014-2015 season, Rondo was traded to the Dallas Mavericks alongside Dwight Powell for Jay Crowder, Jameer Nelson, Brandon Wright, and two future first round picks. In his return to Boston on January 2nd, 2015, Rondo scored a career high 15 first quarter points, finishing with a season best 29. Also having a career high five three point shots to lead Dallas to a 119-101 victory. However, the move to Dallas was a huge downfall in Rondo's career as he did not get along with the Mavs coach, Rick Carlisle. In late April, Rondo and the Mavericks mutually agreed to part ways. That was a huge hit for his reputation and he failed to find a long-term deal in the league. He signed a one-year, $10 million contract to join the Sacramento Kings. He had a solid season with the Kings, leading the league in assists for the third time in his career with 11.7 per game. He also had 11.9 points and two steals per game and set the Kings records for the most triple doubles in the season with six and the most games in the season with double digits and assists with 40. However, Rondo did not stay with the Kings and in 2016 signed a two-year, $28 million contract with the Chicago Bulls. His numbers dropped to 7.8 points and 6.7 assists per game and after having a couple of locker room issues, the Bulls waived him after that season. In 2017-2018 season, Rondo signed one-year, $3.3 million contract with the New Orleans Pelicans. Short into the season, he had a back injury and missed six weeks. After coming back in December of that year, Rondo had a career-high 25 assists in a 128-113 win over the Brooklyn Nets, setting a franchise record and becoming only the seventh player in NBA history to reach a 25 assist game. In the following season, Rondo signed a one-year, $9 million deal with the Lakers, which proved to be a great move, even though he had a rough start in LA. First, he got into a fight with Chris Paul, which got him suspended for three games. After the return, he suffered a broken hand and missed five weeks of action. And in the third game since his return, Rondo suffered a sprain to his right ring finger, which caused 
him to miss another five weeks. However, the season's highlight was a game winner in Boston, and he also became the second player in NBA history to have a triple-double with five different teams. The Lakers failed to make the playoffs that season, but signed Rondo to another one-year deal. That season was suspended by the COVID pandemic, but after the continuation, the Lakers won the NBA championship defeating the Miami Heat in the NBA Finals. Rondo became the second player in history after Clyde Lovellet to win the NBA championship with both the Celtics and the Lakers. That was the last year we saw serious production by Rondo. He split the next season between the Atlanta Hawks and the Los Angeles Clippers before returning to the Lakers in 2021-2022 season. After 18 games in LA that season, he was traded to the Cleveland Cavaliers where he finished the season. Rondo did not play in the 2022-2023 season and likely we have already seen his last basketball game. Rondo's basketball IQ is something that many have labeled as outstanding and even the best ever. He managed to lead a team to a championship at a very young age, and it seems that his temper and holding his own cost him a lot in the later stage of his career. Speaking of the best point guards in NBA history, Rondo's name is barely mentioned, but if we see his assist records and leadership, he goes as one of the most underrated players in NBA history and probably a top 10 point guard of all time.